Okay, so now in the wake of this fight and the, the, the prince's threat, remember it's pain of death if there's another fight, uh, in comes Romeo. And Romeo's not into the fight at all. He's heartbroken over Rosaline. And his, you know, Benvolio, whose name itself means goodwill, his kindness, you know, he was breaking up the fight to begin with. He's always making peace. He comforts him. Now, what Romeo's first presented as is, this is context, is something, he's Petrarchan lover. Petrarch was made famous by a series of sonnets articulating the pain and beautiful joy of the rejected lover. And I think Shakespeare is mocking Romeo because his love is not returned and he is full of woe and he's filled with these oxymorons, contradictions that really are very basic. I think they could potentially be humorous depending on how you play this, but they're not deep. He does not have a deep sense of love. Here he laments mostly that he cannot have a physical relationship with her, that she'll maintain her virginity. But let's take a look. So again, this is scene is edited down. What fray was here? What fight was here? Oh, do, oh you know what? Don't, don't tell me, because I've heard it all before. He is not a fighter. And you know that right from the start. And he's heard it all before. Um, he's used to these guys getting in the street fight. Here's much to do with hate. But actually, it's more to do with love. Uh, I think he might be a little bit self-obsessed, too. Um, because, yeah, for sure this thing has to do with hate. But more to do with love. Isn't that him? I don't know. Why then? Oh, brawling love, fighting love, oh, loving hate. Oh, anything of nothing first create heavy lightness, serious vanity, self-love, misshapen chaos of well-seeming forms. Just contradictions, okay? Um, feather of lead, bright smoke, cold fire, sick health. It's a, it, I mean, it's as if he's doing it on purpose, this list of contradictions. Uh, still waking sleep, that is not what it is. I mean, when you're rejected and you're lovesick, the world is just filled with contradiction. This love feel I, that feel no love in this. It sounds so stupid. It unless you're in love and heartbroken, where you will talk such nonsense, it's really hard to take seriously. And bless Benvolio, he's us. Do you laugh? There's this, that's almost a stage direction to the actor. He's, he's finding it a bit humorous. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, tell me in sadness. Who is it that you love? So I never noticed that, but he doesn't even know who it is. So Romeo hasn't really shared his feelings. Or maybe it's just yet another girl he just saw recently. I mean, this is the thing with him. Kind of falls in love quickly. Though, with Juliet, it seems to be true. Whereas this one, I don't know. Um... What, should I groan and tell thee? Groan, I mean, you know, ache, pain, moan. He's so sad. A right fair mark, fair cuz, as soon as tit. Okay, so good love comes quickly. Okay, so it's, it happens. It, it You know, um, he's, he's shifting this metaphor about a hit. Um, I guess now he's going to take it to Cupid's arrow. Well, in that hit, you miss. So she won't hit, she won't be quick hit. So you trying to get the point um, is a miss. So he's he's punning, extending the metaphor of uh, arrows plus Cupid, 
plus potentially sex too. I don't know. Uh, because she'll not be hit with Cupid's arrow. Um, I wonder if that, you know, there is a sexual pun in that as well. She has Diana's, Diane's with uh, a Greek myth, uh, a goddess uh, known for her virginity. So she has a mindset of Diana and in strong proof of chastity well-armed. So she was an amazing huntress. So again, Cupid plus Diana. I mean, it's just elaborate, extended, metaphoric wordplay. Um, she's armed and from weak, loves weak, childish bow. So Cupid has no competition with the Diana. Cupid, the little baby with wings who shoots the arrows. Compared to Diana's, I mean, Diana's is strong and well-armed. This weak bow, it's not going to work. Um, she will not stay the siege of loving terms. So, siege, he's, he's trying to bombard her. Uh, love equals a kind of war in this language here. No, by the encounter of a sailing eyes, eyes all looking at her. No, now this is very creepy. She won't even take money. She won't open her lap to, to saint seducing, which is particularly funny. So um, uh, saints are, are seduced. I don't know, it's the greed, um, mockery of religion To She is rich in beauty. Okay, she's beautiful, so she's wealthy. But she's poor, and this is a classic trope, because when she dies, her beauty dies. So... Why she's poor is she doesn't have a child who would be the copy of her beauty perpetually. Strange, Romeo, what he's saying. He wants to not just have sex with her. He wants her to have a child to reproduce. So again, this is the classic trope of the Petrarchan lover coming up with elaborate arguments for why he feels sad and how he could feel unfulfilled. Um, Benvolio, great. So, outrage. Then she has sworn that she will have chased. She's going to be a virgin? What? Be ruled by me. Forget to think of her. And he's just this is the greatest thing. He's like, look, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Do what I say. I, I, let me be your master, okay? Just forget her. Oh, such a whiny guy. Teach me how I should forget to think. Teach me. So he's got the best advice. Give liberty to the eyes. Examine other beauties. Look at others. Okay, that's how you forget. Meet a new one. No. You can't teach me to forget. You can't. Why? Because he can't see anyone else or he can't handle it. Again, there's an irony here, of course, because it will be at love at first sight at this party he goes to where he will actually encounter the woman of his dream.